Derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, June 26, 2024. My name is John Piernunzi, and this is the opening swing. Let's begin today, as we always do, with our news. Out of Europe, European indices are mostly unchanged, slightly up, less than half percent. That's what's going on in Europe. Out of Europe, we got the German consumer confidence, French consumer confidence, a Great British guilt auction, French unemployment, and a, a speech by ECB's Lane. Coming into the US hours, we got mortgage apps. It's 7 a.m. already happened. No 8.30 news driver, but at 10 a.m. we have new home sales. And then at 10.30 we have the petroleum report um, for energy traders. Should be uh, a good one. Survey of business uncertainty, not a mover. Four-month bill auction, also not a mover. Uh, another short-term bill auction. The five-year auction I would be attentive to um, at least a bit. And that's what we're getting for news, a little bit on the lighter side. Let's look at some charts. <clears throat> We're going to start by looking at the monthly chart, which we haven't in a while. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on it, but the big thing that we just want to kind of remind ourselves is what a breakout we've had in 2024, just trending higher. And the key here as we three days left in uh, to trade in June, and June is maintaining price discovery higher on the monthly time frame. Very strong, very strong in the monthly time frame. And we have this very clear um, area right here where we had just sort of balance, kind of checked every bit of these prices and then just broke higher. That's what that's what's happening. So very bullish on the monthly time frame. Let's move on to our weekly chart, which we have right here. Not sure why I'm having trouble grabbing these IRT charts, but anyway. So on our weekly chart, the weekly chart is starting to kind of temper the bullishness a little bit. We're still maintaining higher lows and we have not taken out this low. However, we're we're holding below the prior week's VPOC and really not finding a lot of traction above the prior week's settle. And here you see this sort of tight week we have uh, in progress. Um, so this area of this kind of accepted area that we have here is is pretty much being resisted that's what i'm seeing but we're still seeing support ahead of the prior week's low so a so the weekly chart is about starting to balance a bit but there is still a bullish skew based on what's going on until we take this low well <clears throat> or i should say there's a bullish skew and if we take this low i would expect support on the initial on the initial test because we're we're trending higher not to say that we're going to find support and then revert higher immediately we could easily just test lower, find some support, try, and then fail. But I expect to see the support. And that's what we're seeing on the weekly. Uh, basically, it's sort of tempering a bit. We're going to see that trend is continuing, or that sort of theme is continuing as we look at our daily chart. And we see the bullishness is tempering even a bit more. We're not really, we're not one time framing lower because we are able to kind of take out prior days high but a lot of overlapping bars and we're moving value lower we've already taken the prior days high overnight these are full session bars <coughs> excuse me so we've already taken the prior the prior days high the question for us today as of now knowing that we've taken this prior days high is is this a test rejection where we continue lower or and I should have done that with a different color. Let's do it correctly. Is this a test rejection that will continue lower or attempt to continue lower? Or is this a oops? Or is this a breakout that will continue higher? That's the main question that we have today since we've ha already had that high broken. Um, on the on the lower side on the downside here we have right around these tens elevens twelves area we have these two lows not exactly a double bottom but close enough that i would consider it a poorly auctioned area 
and right below if those get taken out we have our singles which are the big target so basically the big the big thing we have to understand on the daily it's mostly balancing but we've taken the high and the question we want to know are we going to hold that and continue or are, are we going to fall back into range let's take a quick look at our hourly chart if i can grab it here And I'll tighten this up just a bit because there's a few things I want to mention here. 81s, I just want to mention this because I have it marked on the other chart and we can't see it, but these, this kind of 81s area. After we put in this gap, the, the 612 gap, which happened around our CPI release, we impulse repriced higher and we sort of held these 81s. There was, a, there was an order flow sort of event there. I talked about it a lot at Convergent and uh, during the opening swing during those times. Let me center this chart a little bit so you guys can see it. Oops, that's the wrong chart. Okay, there we go. But anyway, so um, repriced, tested lower, and obviously that was a test rejection. So I still have these 80s marked. They're marked on the other chart, just so we know. Other than that, we had the additional repricing lower. And again, we're kind of trying to do the same thing, pushing below. What's the important price up here? 35s to 40s, the area that we've been talking about. And we have our, our lows right here, our poorly auctioned lows get rid of some of this and and be aware of the trend so off of these lows we're seeing this kind of like very mild mild trend higher already through the prior days high so like I said there's like a a bid or a quorum of buyers or a lack of sellers I mentioned converging yesterday that this is what I would consider a poorly auctioned area and usually we can we expect those to be taken out weeks what we expect to see it's like so there, we expect to see sort of a push through, then we're out of balance and everything. And it's kind of like, you know, we have a very firm bid here. It, it breaks, we fill it. It kind of, the market kind of wafts around. Nobody knows what's going on. And then somewhere, some buyer steps up and then other buyers step up in, in back of them, behind them. And then all of a sudden we come back to the price that we were just at. And everyone's like, yeah, actually that was a buy. And then we continue. We expect to see that, that sort of checking of prices. And that gives us, would often give us an excess. However, when I mentioned this in Convergent yesterday, when we have a, uh, a day that's just not giving us a lot of movement, not a lot of volatility or liquidity, sometimes these don't get taken out. And that's what happened yesterday. And we've went higher from there. But anyway, so the big question for us in terms of this chart is, do we continue this sort of like kind of grinding action up or do we fall lower and and recheck those prices that's our big question today let's move to a trigger chart and discuss some specific price action for those ideas here's our trigger chart what areas are important today well we have these lows right around yesterday's low called the tens elevens Below that, we have the 05s to century, which is, this is the key target area if we break. 05s to century. If we get it, well, there's a solid chance that we slip a little further to these 90s. Then below that, we have these 82 area, which I just talked about on the hourly chart, so we don't have to go over this. Coming back, back into this area, we have our VPOC here, around 22 half. And then we have the, the key kind of 30 to 35 region that I was talking about today, and we just pushed through and we're retesting it right now. Uh, this 30 to 35 area, our settlement is in there. So is the prior week settle and the high. So there's a lot in this area going on. Then we have our developing overnight high and then our prior high, the 58s. In between, we have the prior week's VPOC. And then above 75s, prior week's high, RTH all time high. And this area between here, is kind of no man's land to me. There's not really a lot going on. I do have a stock zone up there, but um, really there's not a ton going on up there for me. Maybe you have something. 
Anyway, let's discuss our price action. Let's talk about the, uh, first off, in no particular order, really, I'm just going to say some possibilities. And we're going to begin, we're going to begin, why am I having trouble here, with possibility number one. Possibility number one would be if this 30 to 35 area holds, which would be a hold of this kind of like very uh, sort of weak looking uptrend, which I could, which would basically be holding the FS levels and the two day VWAP, the, this white um, dashed line is the two day VWAP. So if we get that hold here, we're starting to look like maybe we want to hold. So, you know, it could be something where pre-market we sort of see an attempt attempt higher, chop around a little bit, revert back up out of range, hold, move through this area and take this high. Once, if we take that high and hold on pullbacks and then we're trading this area right here above the overnight high below our prior 58 high, that it's important how this area is treated. Because if we accept this area, we see lifting keep happening. People try to hit bids, the price doesn't go down. Maybe one attempt reverts higher. Again, if that happens and we are accepting prices up there, then I would expect a grind to continue. I'm really not so sure about what happens above this area, except I would expect it to be grindy and the target would be the 75s. Grindy action, target 75s. I would expect resistance on the first test of 75s. Uh, we'll also discuss this is an area right here where we could see rejection. But um, anyway, so this is the, the, the most bullish idea, number one, the most bullish idea, not saying it's the most likely, I'm just saying it's the most bullish idea, and that would be FS levels hold, 30, 35s hold, we revert higher, we take the overnight high, and we accept prices around the prior day's VPOC. That's number one. Let's talk about number two. What's a, this, a second idea that could happen? A second idea that could happen is we get kind of an attempt like we're trying to do what I just mentioned here. However, pre-market, we just really can't hold prices above, uh, above yesterday's high. Maybe we don't even get this. Maybe we just sort of grind around in here. And then at some point, we just release lower through the 35s attempt to retest, can't really get back above and continue lower. What price are we looking for in that situation? We're looking for the prior day's VPOC. That's our target. The prior day's VPOC is an area where we may see support. If support happens and we revert back above these 35s, then and we get back above the 35s in yesterday's high, then the bull case may be back on, may be back on. We'll discuss more of that later, but anyway, Assuming that doesn't happen and we test the VPOC, we try to get higher, we can't get back out of range, we continue, where are we looking then? We're looking for this area. That's where we're looking. So if we get something like this, target, second target, if you have the bullets, and if you got a runner, we'd look for this price, century. If we get the whole way out of range and drop to these singles, I would be less expecting continuation below, but it's very possible. But if we do get continuation below century, we know what we're looking for. And I think that the, these um, 10s, 11s area would be pretty key, uh, how it's treated if we, um, if we get continuation. I would expect it to be like something like a flush, tight zipper, and then the continuation. If we start getting back up into this area and testing, I think it would be more likely that, that any late shorts get nervous and we start to revert higher to the prior day's VPOC. Um, but anyway, so number one is we hold FS levels and we continue higher. We're looking for the overnight high, potentially 58s. And then beyond that, it would just be a runner. I would actively manage it. I'm not sure we get the whole way to 75s. We could. That's one. Two is we attempt that same thing, but we fall back lower and the Predominantly during the RTH session, this area is offered, the prior high is offered, we push lower, we target the prior day's VPOC. Prior day's VPOC is an area we could find support. However, if we fall lower, we know what we're looking for. We're looking for the prior day's low, these lows. Flushing through there, we want the singles. That's what we're looking for. So that's one and two. Those are the two things that could happen. 
Both of them would give a trade, but what happens if we get something that doesn't give a trade? Let's talk about that. It's going to be, it's still going to have, it's, we're still going to have a lot of attention around this area. If we get chop, what could chop look like? Chop could look like an attempt here that looks like it's the short scenario, falls lower, takes the prior day's VPOC. Looks like it wants to continue. Everybody wants to short for this level, but all of a sudden, not enough sellers. We revert higher, get back up. Now we're trading settle again and settle some. It looks great. Oh, we're going to get long. And then all of a sudden we push higher and then we can't take out the 48s or 50s, something like this. And then we just fall back lower and just chop around in this area. So this would be a scenario that would be a lot more difficult. We don't get the clean trade off the 30 to 35 area. As long as we do find support, though, around the prior day's VPOC, I would lean bullish. If we dip into these prices and we test into the prior day's VPOC and we get higher, I would lean bullish. However, I would just be less like I would be less ambitious about seeing this overnight high taken out and would think we'd maybe chop in this area. That's what, what I would think. Again, also, we could also get sort of a nothing scenario that happens with a quick reversion higher. It happens maybe too quick. We don't get a trade off and everybody's frustrated. We're like, oh, we'll play the continuation and target 60s or whatever, or 75s. And then what happens is the market just drops back below. And then we end up chopping above 35s, but below around 60s. And it just becomes a mess in this area. That's another way that we could get a messy situation. But both of those situations, um, I just mentioned them because if we get a nice clean trade off these 35s, that would be great either direction would work however if we just start to chop or if the price the price movement happens too early or too fast we might miss it so then we just have to be aware of okay if we just miss the repricing what happens now are we going to continue or are we going to chop and for me uh if we drop lower the prior weeks you know we're looking at 35s for me i'm looking at 35 30 35s 40s this area this is the first area to key off of if we drop then i'm looking to key off the prior days vpoc if we hit the priorities VPOC, we revert. Then I'm looking to key off of settlement and settlement and uh, this 35s area again. Do we drop and can and and continue, or do we continue up and get the priorities VPOC and the overnight high? So that's basically what I'm thinking. This is the landscape. This is how I'm looking to trade the S and P's today. We'll see what we get. Uh, hopefully we'll get something, a nice clean trade. Ra be aware that range is very compressed this week. So, you know, there is potential to get some kind of movement, but if there's, you know, not a lot of news, so we also be, have to be careful, it might be choppy. But uh, this is what I'm thinking today. I hope this is helpful. I hope it's complete. I hope everyone's having a good morning, and I hope that that can continue into the day and you can improve your trading somehow. And of course, as always, I hope that you can make someone else smile because that's really the most important thing on the docket every day in my opinion and the opinion of buddhists so that's what i got for you today have a great one i'll see you tomorrow bye everybody